Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I am here with Chaplain John Wenderlein, who is an amazing hospice chaplain. And I think so much about um, this time of life. I've now, this hour, for those of you that have heard my story, you've heard it before. It's an overpowering, overwhelming time of life for those that are caring for loved ones. And hospice is so much involved. And Chaplain John, I love that you've written books about this because I think a lot of us don't necessarily know what hospice is, don't necessarily know how it applies to families and really what an amazing um, thing it is for families and the, you know, the loved one that is passing um, at the end of their life. And I'm just curious, uh, Chaplain John, what got you started to be a hospice chaplain? Well, I'll tell you, Suzanne, about 30 years ago or so, I was finishing one of my degrees in school, in seminary, and it was about the time that the book, President Bush had was working us into another war, and mm-hmm. he was calling up the National Guard, and mm-hmm. some of our some of my uh, co- co- uh, classmates were young, and they were going to get called up, and there was great worry and great distress in their face, and I was a man of my late 30s thinking... Hmm, I wonder. And you know, somehow at the same time, I read an article that said for every 1500 soldiers, there was a chaplain. And my heart said, my heart said, that's not enough for that person who is near dying or dying. They just need someone to say it's going to be okay. I know that sounds simple. So I left there with the idea, well, I'm going to get a big church, another big church. And, you know, it just never worked. It never seemed to fit in. And then I was at a building in downtown Orlando, dropping off a bill. And as I walked out of that office, I looked to a door on the other side where another business was, and it said hospice on it. And I went, oh, hospice. That's those people who help you pass away, you know. So I walk in, I talk to the little girl in the office, and she says, well, hold on, I'll bring out Gloria. She's the one that does the volunteers. Oh, wow. Wow come back. And I had conversation with her halfway into the conversation. I was just going to volunteer my time. She said, hold on a second. I have something I have to do. And I thought to myself when she left, I said, oh no, I talk too much. (laughs) She's she's just trying to get away. Yeah. So she brought the manager of that division in, Ann, and said, John, this is Ann. And this is John. And I had a 20 minute or so conversation with Ann. And Ann said, when can you come to work? And I said, oh my goodness. Well, I mean, I'm not, I can't really come to work right now, but you know, I can volunteer. She said, well, we're going to pay you either way. So oh, for I about, love it. about a year, I just did, and I couldn't wait for them to call me. So one day she called me and called me on the phone. This chat, listen, John, we need to hire you full time. Uh, I said, when do I start? And you know, it's, I've never been the same since. Mm-hmm. My, first, my first patient was so crazy. It was so out of the ordinary. <laughs> When I got home, I said, this is for me. My wife yeah. hasn't heard enough stories about it, but I love it. I got started. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think too, um, when you find your calling, it's oh. like that that's it. You know, I, I know for me, I feel the same way about what I do. And yeah. I think that's the thing that when we all find our passion, um, that's at the end of our lives, we look back and we say, we fulfilled a purpose. That's we exactly did right. that important thing. So you obviously took this and you wrote two books. Tell us about your books. Well, my first book, actually, I wanted the second book to be my first book, but my first book was called Remember Me. And it's called End of Life as Seen Through the Eyes of a Hospice Chaplain. What I found was, Suzanne, as I was visiting these patients, I was having nurses upset and the caregivers, up. You know, everybody was upset. But I would leave, not that I wasn't emotionally attached, but I would I would leave having to put their stories down. So yeah. on my computer, I have a thousand, fifteen hundred stories that I've just thought. Oh were my amazing. goodness, that's so amazing! One of my pastor buddies here about a year or two ago said, "You know, John, you should write a book." I was telling him just a quick story. He wasn't a chaplain; he was a retired pastor. And he says, "John, that story is so overwhelming. You yeah. should." So you know, 
through the through the guidance of the Lord, I read my first read, read my wrote my first book. Excuse me, and uh, I struggled with it. You know, I struggled with the language and the the diction and the English. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, with my uh, help of close friends and my wife, who I mentioned in the first mm -hmm. book, um, I got through it. Um, That's amazing. My second book, which I said should have been my first book, mm -hmm. was. What I've what we found is, and many people forget, is we have pretty much buried a generation of World War II and Korean vets. They're all at 100 years old, most of them. Mm -hmm. The last patient I had was 105, and he wow. was a he was an army army he was in the Army Air Corps, which wow. ended in 1947. So, um, but what I was finding was when I would meet a Vietnam veteran at the end of his life, I talked about this reflection. He was they were they were devastated. They were heartbroke. Yeah. And, I, and the same story came true is that when they came back to this country, they were, you know, they were just spat upon horrible things done. I, so I took those stories and I put them into a story in my second book. And that book has just come out a couple of weeks ago and that's called The Late Honor. But in that are systematic okay. stories of different branches of the service of men mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. suffered well, and you know, to read these stories of those in the military, so many of us have veterans in our families, um, the sacrifices they make. And I've, I've, you know, in working with a lot of veterans providers and communities, I, I know of there's veterans, you know, senior living communities that cater specifically to veterans. And it's because of the stories they share. All of us that have not had military uh, experience, we can't relate to what yeah. they experience. And those that's important. That's true. In fact, as you'll find in my second book, I I use reference to a, it's like a John Wayne movie. I'm so, oh I'm so uh, elaborated or so... Uh -huh so unbelievable this story they're telling that i feel like uh john wayne should save the day or audie murphy you know who was the mm -hmm. most yeah in world war ii is going to take the machine gun and yeah save the day. but these stories didn't end didn't end in a glorious way mm -hmm. yeah they ended with them in bed dying suffering through nightmares and yes you know, ways yes. in which they were treated so that's so, what my second book is about yeah I'm sorry. so both of these books we can get on your website as well as amazon what are the names of them again in your website john amazon remember me remember me dot excuse me remember me jw.com is my uh -huh. website amazon remember me is the first book and delayed honor is the second or just type in my name john wenderline W-E-N-D-E-R-L-E-I-N in Amazon and you'll find them. Yeah. And we will put also, when we put John's interview up on Answers for Elders, we will link to John's website. And I am very thrilled, John, to have you on the show this week. So thank you so much for all you do for our families and for our military veterans. God bless you. Time to get back to Suzanne and more Answers for Elders. Welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I would like to thank again our wonderful hospice chaplain, John Wenderline, for being a part of our show this week. Think about your loved ones that are at the end of their lives or maybe a senior. Try to listen more. We learned this hour and also have the conversations and take time to forgive the past. I think those are important. And most importantly, learn to love and let love lead you. So again, um, you can reach John at rememberme.jw.com and both of his books are there. And until next week, be good to each other. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.